Hello, I'm Eric Shawn. Time now for Sunday House Call. And I'm Arthel Neville. Joining us now is Dr. David Samadi, Chairman and Professor of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and Chief of Robotic Surgery. And Dr. Mark Siegel, Professor of Medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center. He's also the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and health. Doctors, Good to see welcome. You. Happy Easter. Great. Happy Easter. Getting ready Happy for Easter. spring, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hopefully, I know exactly. <laughs> well, we begin today with something that affects millions of men every year, and that's prostate cancer. How do you detect it? What can you do to watch for it? And what do you do if you receive a prostate cancer diagnosis? Dr. Samadhi? Eric, number one, it's important for people to know that it's t still today in 2016, 30,000 men die from prostate cancer. How do you know you have prostate cancer? And the answer is that it's asymptomatic. You should absolutely have no symptoms. That's why they call this silent killer. So it's important for you to go to the doctor, get your PSA, know what your numbers are, and look at the trend. At the same time, the urologist like myself will examine your prostate. 15% of the time, we may feel a nodule. What is a nodule? Your prostate typically would feel very soft and smooth, like the palm of your hand. If it feels like a knuckle and it's firm, that's a problem. And we will get an MRI, we will get an MRI fusion biopsies that we have in our center, and we're able to diagnose you with prostate cancer. I have a couple of questions. I know we're going to get to your PSA number, Eric. First of all, I want to know what is a PSA number? What does that tell you as a doctor? Go ahead, Mark. I think that he deals a lot with okay. PSA so, and, and, of course, we have a big, it starts with me, and then it ends up with David. So a prostate-specific antigen is not a specific protein for prostate cancer, and David said this many times. It shows you that there's something going on in the prostate. That's key, Arthel, because when you have a PSA over 4, only 30% of the time is it prostate cancer. What else could it be? could be the gland has grown. It could be an infection. And a lot of the times when David and I put our heads together, we might try an antibiotic first. See if we bring the PSA down before we start to worry. Should I worry, right? Also, we try to figure out if the gland could be growing. And we follow a trend, a velocity, a PSA velocity. If the thing suddenly starts to zoom up, then we start to worry. And, and as David already said, we, say, we do it in conjunction with a digital rectal exam where we're feeling for a nodule and following a PSA. I got another question. I'm the girl here, but I got all the questions <laughs> today about this. Uh, I wanted to ask you about that exam. Uh, is there another way to do it? Because I think a lot of men don't like the idea of the old fashioned way that people. It's interesting test that you bring this up because today we can get a lot of genetic tests that we have in our practice. We have urine tests called PCA3 tests, uh, and also we have MRI imaging studies that we can get. And if you find the lesion on the MRI, certainly in our center and many other centers, they have MRI fusion, meaning that we take the pictures of the ultrasound and high, make a fusion of, with the MRI images. And just like a GPS, we'll find that what area in your prostate is more susceptible and more prone to get prostate cancer and specifically go after that. The big question, Arthur, that comes up is you're diagnosed with prostate cancer and, and what do you do now? And that's a big ticket over here. And we've seen a lot of ads about these radiations and surgery, et cetera. And one size fit all is a wrong medicine. Obviously, you have to talk to your doctor. What I like about surgery is the fact that a lot of times you remove the prostate and surgery is the only one that gives you a very accurate staging. How much cancer you have, what type of Gleason score you have. PSA after surgery should be zero and it's undetectable. So you can rest at night, which is not the same as, as radiation. This is a big ticket. Eric, if somebody will get surgery first, and the cancer comes back after surgery, you can get radiation after surgery, but if you get CD implants, cyber knife, a lot of these radiations and the cancer comes back, you can get surgery. That's the very important. The prostate cancer can come back after the prostate is removed? In about 5 to 10 percent of the time. That's why we follow the PSA, and as long as it's yeah. undetectable, you're cured. Well, you talk about following the PSA. This is what really gets me about this, is that you go to the doctor, you get a blood test, and you, and you get the PSA number. You don't know what that means. It, the, it says where the range is, but you've got to follow like a stock market chart, and they don't do that, which is so I brought out my PSA. Uh, By the way, it I, took five years to get <laughs> Eric's PSA. <laughs> we were trying, we were I trying. have it too now. We all have <laughs> it. I mean, they got it on Easter. So well, we've this been is trying the, that's the point. You go to the doc, you get the blood test, and I'm going to show you my PSA right now. In January, they did the bloods, and I had a 3.18. I'm like, I don't know what that means, but I, I took a look from a year before at a 2.40. So there I went up like almost a point, you know, so now I'm jumping up because they say if you jump up, that's bad. But then a few years earlier, I was up at like almost three. And then, you know, a few years before that, I was at 1.43. So Dr. Samadhi, I've doubled from 2006. And Mark, should I worry? 
I say no, and I'll tell you why. Assuming that your prostate exam is normal, that digital rectal, that you don't have any yeah. bumps, that you don't have any ridges, I wouldn't worry because the magic number is four here, Eric, and the slight increase you're seeing is equal to you're getting a little bit older and your prostate's getting a little bit bigger. I'm sorry, but you're getting a little older. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're below nice. four, I can tell you there's an 85% chance below four that you do not have prostate cancer. That's what I like about the PSA. It can be reassuring like that. And you can check it. I don't have to go to Dr. Samadhi, who's a urologist. I can yeah. come to the internist to check the PSA. Well, as well yes, or no, yes or no, Arthur. I want to give a word of caution on that. Because sure. these days, sometimes internists do too much. Yes, you can come to me. Yes, I can screen. But if I start telling Eric there's something wrong, his first question is, well, how about a urologist? Specialists have a role, too. Yeah. And, and it, it can't be that I can't handle the whole thing it's my, by myself. People should get their PSA at the age of 40, especially if you have a family history of prostate cancer. You should know ahead of time. And if it's over 1.5 at the age of 40, that's a big red flag. So the number four is not always the case. I want to know how big your prostate is because you may have an 80 gram prostate, and that's why your PSA would be higher than someone like, for example, Mark, whose P prostate would be 60 grams. Oh, so depends upon the, the size, size of prostate oh, wow, has something to do with your PSA okay. as well. Have you had any infections recently? Do you have any inflammation or prostatitis? And these are all extremely important. The bottom line is, if you're diagnosed with prostate cancer, there are some low-risk ones that we may watch, but you, we can save your life because as long as it's contained, all these like myths about incontinence and impotence, all of that has to do with the experience of the surgeon. And when you go to a high-volume person with robotic technology, at least so one, the way I do it in about an hour. If, you should, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you should, you're basically saying that if you're at four or under, you should be generally okay. You should be okay, and certainly, like, if there's any doubt, and again, there are things that I may find that Mark or internist may miss, the same way that he Absolutely. can find arrhythmia that I may miss, but if there's any doubt, we will get an MRI and we will look further into but it. Dr. Samadhi, you are chief of robotic surgery. Is that available to every, every, every place in the nation, not just you? But so that's an excellent question. There are a lot of robots out there, but the experience and the person behind these robots is what determines your outcome. So we, I have done now well over 7,000 surgeries. Surgeries. Uh, we have a team. I performed the entire case. The whole center is dedicated to prostate cancer, and that's one of the reasons why I always say, and you've been extremely instrumental in saving lives by just giving this website. If you're diagnosed with prostate cancer and you're confused, someone tells you to get CyberKnife, you have HIFU, you have surgery, go to prostatecancer911.com, prostatecancer911.com, send your information, and we will be glad to help you. Uh, is robotic surgery available to everybody in every state? It's out there. We have about a thousand robots out in the United States, but people don't know how to use them. Okay, that's so you key. want to go to Center of Excellence, people who have done a couple of thousands of these. Quick thought. The key, the key point here that I want to emphasize is we're going in the direction of less invasive surgery, more minimal surgery. It's, it makes sense. The less surgery you have, the earlier you get home, the better you get back on your feet. But the key, the key, key point David just made is you better make sure that the person has a lot of experience with that particular kind of surgery. And as far as the PSA is concerned, to put this all together, once the prostate is out, you shouldn't have a PSA. It should be zero. So then surgeons can follow that to make sure there's no... By the way, there's okay. also sex after surgery, there's quality of life after surgery, and there is continence after surgery because the new technology with the way we do the operation really saves your quality well, of life. Don't be scared. Thankfully, for now, I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet because I'm under four. That's what I've learned. Well, we, so apologize. Okay. We, we apologize yeah. that we called you an old man. You're, not, you're still a very young man with all a right, great I'm under time. four, and that's all I... That's all <laughs> you're, you're good.